What's up everyone, Alex here. You might not know what Kunitsugami Path of the Goddess is all about, but you probably want to know that it's one of the year's sleeper hits. When Kunitsugami was revealed in 2023, people were very excited to learn about it. But Capcom held onto the secret of its genre for so long that when previews of the game came out, many of us were just simply not around to pay attention. This inspired me to make this review into something different than my usual offerings, so I've asked my community to send in questions and use them to paint a picture of what Kunitsugami Path of the Goddess is all about. This is all to say that if you have a very specific question about the game, feel free to skip around using the chapter markers to find your answers. But first things first, what is the game? Kunitsugami Path of the Goddess is an action strategy game with a mythical Japanese theme. The footage that you're seeing right now is from the PS4 version of the game running on the PS5, and I'd like to thank Capcom for providing me with this game code. Who are the devs behind it? Kunitsugami is developed by Capcom Development Division 1, which is the studio responsible for Resident Evil and Devil May Cry. Shuichi Kawada, who worked on Shin Sekai Into the Depths, serves as the game's director. The game was in development for four years, and much like Shin Sekai and Akami, the game is heavily inspired by Japanese folklore. In fact, your character's combat style was inspired by an ancient ceremonial form of dance called Kagura, while enemy designs were inspired by Japanese yokai. The game was built on Capcom's proprietary RE engine. Which games would you compare it to? Fans of which games would enjoy this the most? Kunitsugami is a very unique game, but fans of strategy games like Unicorn Overlord, 13 Sentinels Aegis Rim, Tecmo's Deception, The Overlord, and to a lesser extent, the Pikmin series will love its gameplay. Thematically, Okami has a lot of similarities in feel with this one, albeit darker and more macabre. How much is action RPG and how much is tower defense? For the most part, if you've upgraded your classes well and positioned your troops effectively, you won't have to directly engage your opponents. That being said, there will be extraneous circumstances that will force you to be more active during combat, and I'll get to those when I talk about stages shortly. Do the stages get progressively more complex and diverse? Kunitsugami has three gameplay modes with a day and night cycle governing two of them. The first gameplay mode requires So, that's you, to carve a path for Yoshiro, your maiden, towards several possessed Tori gates to purify the area of Yokai. This gameplay mode features a day and night cycle. During daytime, you'll be able to purify effigies and free villagers trapped in cocoons. You'll be able to assign different classes to these villagers, and position them in spots to intercept Yokai emerging from the Tori gates. Optionally, you can also command your villagers during daytime to unblock certain portions of the map. Note that Yoshiro will only move during daytime, and you can tell her to stop at any time if you find a strong defensive position along the path. When nighttime falls, Yokai will start spawning from possessed Tori gates, forcing you to defend Yoshiro. When Yoshiro dies, it's game over. But when you die, you're forced into spirit form, unable to attack and command your villagers, and will be respawned after a certain period of time. You have a weak and strong attack, a jump, and a special ability that you can use that has a fairly long cooldown. This ability can be equipped at camps after the area has been fully purified. Your villagers will auto-attack when enemies come within their range, the second gameplay mode is a boss battle, where you assign roles to your villagers and try to overcome a powerful yokai. Unlike the tower defense section, Yoshiro will stay in one spot, requiring you to defend her position while you try to defeat the boss. Each boss in the game has unique mechanics and requires you to be creative with your positioning and composition. The third gameplay mode is base building, which asks you to repair things around the entire encampment. Repairing things requires a certain number of villagers and completing stages. This is also where you'll be able to save your game, swap around your special ability, upgrade your classes, as well as equip passives that'll help you in the other two modes. This mode has a day and night cycle as well, and that's as far as I'll say about that. 
In terms of complexity and diversity, the game constantly surprised me with new mechanics and gimmicks that made me look forward to every single stage I took on. And oftentimes, completing stages also means unlocking new abilities and classes that made me play around with them even more. Are there a lot of micromanaging mechanics to be aware of? Whenever I think of micromanaging mechanics, I think of a variety of different resources that you'll have to gather to build things. Fortunately, there are only three, technically four, currencies that you'll need to pay attention to. The most prevalent of them all, and quite frankly, the one that you'll keep an eye out for the most, are crystals. Crystals can be obtained by purifying effigies and animals, freeing villagers, defeating yokai, and other means. Crystals are used to assign classes to villagers, and more importantly, carve a path for Yoshiro. Crystals do have a maximum limit, which can be increased by fully repairing camps. Musubi, not this Musubi, is a currency used to upgrade your classes at camps. Generally speaking, finishing a stage or any sub-objectives will reward you with Musubi. There are also rations, which lets you heal yourself and your villagers. And finally, stage completion. As mentioned, repairs at camps require you to complete stages, so the more stages you complete, regardless of whether or not you finish sub-objectives, the more repairs will be finished. Is it easy to pick up? I'll readily admit that I am generally terrible at tower defense strategy games, so you'll be happy to know that Kunitsugami does a really good job of teaching you the basics and letting you do whatever you want without penalty. This next question is actually one question, but I'll read all of them. Is the game balanced? Was the game difficult? How difficult is the game? How's the difficulty? Are there multiple difficulties? To be blunt, there are no multiple difficulties in Kunitsugami. And yes, the game is fairly balanced. Though I will add that boss battles can be difficult, as the game asks you to figure out their gimmicks and strategies on the fly. This can be frustrating for some, but thankfully, the loading screen text does give you a few tips to go by if you get a bit stuck. Otherwise, the tower defense gameplay difficulty ramps up well and really tests your comprehension of its systems in such a way that makes you feel like you're getting stronger and smarter as you take on more challenges. Is there replayability? Yes! Upon completing either the tower defense or boss battle stages, you'll be shown additional sub-objectives that you can complete. This not only earns you Musubi for completing them, but also helps advance repairs at camp, so you're doubly incentivized to revisit older stages. Not only that, Kunitsugami also features a new game plus, where all of your repairs and items you've collected will carry over to the new game, which makes your second time through feel a bit interesting, given that you'll be even more powered up. This next question is, once again, four different questions, but I'll roll them into one. Is there a story, and is it good? Did you find the narrative and world building to be delivered well? Are the world building and characters fleshed out at all? Does it have any sense of narrative, or is it just gameplay and X amount of missions to engage with? The premise is pretty simple. Yokai have desecrated a sacred mountain and have defiled various settlements, and it's up to you and Yoshiro to go around and purify the land to push the yokai back where they came from. And that's pretty much it, in a nutshell. That said, every tower defense and boss stage opens and ends with a cutscene, which makes each stage feel special. Some cutscenes even happen in the middle of the stage, but that's as much as I'll talk about that. Other than that, there are pieces of lore surrounding the different yokai you'll fight, as well as different things you'll encounter throughout the game. But in terms of a driving narrative, most of that's embedded as part of the gameplay, giving more importance to the latter. Would you recommend it for people who don't usually like survival slash base building? Tower defense games are quite different from survival games, in that the latter requires a lot of hunting ingredients and building things to make sure that you're not starving for the night and some such. That aside, I can easily recommend it for people who usually don't like tower defense, survival, or base building, in that the thematic presentation, the sound design, and the gameplay can be so engaging that it might even make you forget that it's a tower defense game. The constant tweaking, refining, and upgrading of various skills and abilities makes building your villagers into strong warriors feel very rewarding. 
There's nothing like seeing your villagers one-shot yokai left and right that used to give you trouble in the beginning, and that's a feeling that Kunitsugami delivers really well. Again, this next question is actually two questions, and I'll read both of them. Is this a long RPG time sink investment or a more manageable 20 to 40 hour range mid-sized experience for the time sensitive gamer? And how many hours can you put into this game? Replaying the various stages I've completed doesn't feel like a time sink for me, as I saw those as yet another opportunity to repair my camps and get more musubi. In fact, I can honestly say that Kunitsugami might also be a perfect snackable game in that you can play one or two stages, leave, play another game, then come back later and know what you're doing. Overall, while I sank about 27 hours into the game for review, I'd imagine that others will take between 25 to 35 hours depending on how meticulous you want to be with completing side objectives and or getting the best clear times for boss battles. Do you like the combined genres? Yes, I think the presence of boss battles gives a bit more importance to the action, and being able to help your villagers out during tower defense sections alleviates the pain that players experience when they may be missing a crucial element or two during combat. Did it keep you engaged to the end? The gameplay loop is quite addicting, so I'd say that it absolutely did. Is it a game that will get content added to it over time? Apart from the fact that Capcom has an Akami DLC that's free as far as I know, they have no plans for DLC for the game right now. If there's one thing that I want you to take away from this video is that Kunitsugami Path of the Goddess is yet another Capcom game that ventures far and away from the glitz, glamour, and popularity of its AAA library and injects it with an indie developer spirit that reminds us of Shinsekai and Okami before it. This is the kind of risk taking that I love seeing in video games, so if you're looking for a breath of fresh air and don't mind yokai being in your face from time to time, then you're gonna wanna play Kunitsugami Path of the Goddess.